All right. Um, so uh, today we are going to do uh, some uh, problems that deal with uh, working percent composition, but in reverse. So you're going to want to title your new section this, Problems that Predict Chemical Formula When Given the Percent Composition. So um, this is not quite as easy and straightforward as a percent composition problem. So um, we need to get some background knowledge first, that being uh, what the empirical formula is. So um, you might know glucose from biology, and you're like, that's not glucose, CH2O2. So um, this is more of a mathematical tool uh, in uh, empirical formula because it gives us the simplest whole number ratio of all atoms. So um, for the uh, biology people out there, you might go, yeah, I think glucose is, uh, I know what that is. I know the molecular formula of it, C6H12O6. Um, you've seen that uh, coming all the way up through your science here. Uh, and uh, that's a that's a, a, a good thing for us to, um, to know the difference between empirical and molecular formula. So the molecular formula will give the total number uh, of all atoms and will add up to uh, the formula weight for glucose. Because that's what glucose really is, right? It's not CH2O. It's C6H12O6. Um, so when we do these problems, we're always going to get the empirical formula. We'll always get the simplest whole number ratio, and then we'll have to use the formula weight to take it a, a step further. All right? So make sure you got those definitions down. Hit pause if you need to. All right. So we're going to call this RPCP number one. It's just a nickname I have for it. I made it up. It's reverse percent composition problem, RPCP, number one. All right, so there it is. A metal oxide is found to be 74.186% sodium, 25.814% oxygen. All right, so given those percents, what can we do? Well, we're asked to predict the empirical formula for this oxide. So what's the ratio of this thing? And it looks like when you're seeing it right there, I'll turn off the sound on my phone because I'm getting a lot of text messages here from family. Um, so uh, this kind of looks like a three parts to one part, or, uh, you know, uh, the ratio can, can be misleading when you see it as percents. Because what we have to take into account is that sodium and oxygen are not the same size. So... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume 100 grams. And don't assume that I know you're assuming. Write this down when you do these problems. This is a very step-by-step -step process. Remember I told you it's going to be open note. So if you see that it's a reverse percent composition problem, start by assuming 100 grams. And if you assume 100 grams, then the percents can be directly converted into grams, okay? Uh, because it's out of 100, percents out of 100. So um, we can just directly convert those into 100. You're going to put a parenthesis around that. And what we're going to do is this is our very first conversion of going from grams to moles. We're going to use this factor label method. Um, and you can see I just put the gram on the bottom there because I want those grams to cancel out. And you know how to convert grams to moles. You do that using your periodic table um, and looking them up and going one place to the right. So there you go. Boom. 23.0 grams per mole. Now when we do this, uh, this one doesn't count for significant figure. That's just counting. So this is three significant figures. And this is 5, so my answer can have three significant figures. 3.23 3 
moles. So now I've converted into something that I can do a real true ratio on. Um, you convert the oxygen right directly into grams. Set up parentheses. I want you to show your work this way. Um, the end of the chapter, the stuff we're doing next week, we're going to do uh, conversions that are multiple steps like this. So this is just a simple one-step uh, conversion. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, grams to moles. If grams is on the top there, you put it on the bottom there to cancel it. And you can convert grams to moles uh, using uh, the uh, atomic weight. Uh, so when you crunch those numbers, your calculator will lie a little bit because it only has three sig figs. So um, you're the chemist, and you go back to your boss, and you say, I found the formula of that. It's Na to the 3.230 O to the 1.61. Um, and your boss says, uh, I think you need to take a vacation. Um, that's not very good, clean math. So what we have to do is we have to clean these up a little bit. And here's a little trick. You're going to divide each one by 1.61. The reason we picked 1.61 is it was the smallest. And make sure you write that down. Remember, you have this example to use. So you convert them into moles and then divide each by the smallest number, and you'll end up with, um, don't make sure you write that, okay? And then you end up with uh, this nice little 1.00, okay? Because if you're dividing it by the smallest, the smallest one will always be one. So it's a one to basically a two ratio. Now that has to be really close to two in order for us to be confident, and that's pretty darn close to two if you're sticking with your three sig figs so and and you could probably have even visualized that at this point um, but show me that step of dividing by the smallest and then the next thing I, I need is just just the whole numbers uh, that uh, are going to be part of this which is the Na2O so I actually uh, I go right from here divide by the smallest and then if you got the formula right then you're good to go. So it's a 2 to 1 ratio between sodium and oxygen. Okay, so we're going to do one more. Um, uh, write these down. Uh, go ahead and hit the pause because I'm going to go through this pretty quick in hopes that we can get this in in one lecture. All right, um, just leave a little space where those blue boxes are um, and we'll come back to that. Okay, so we're going to come back to that. Uh, the first step is assume 100 grams. And then all those numbers, or both of those numbers, can be, boom, uh, turned into uh, uh, gram amounts. Okay? And then we're dividing this, and we're dividing this, and you got to watch those sig figs. This one looks like it has a whole bunch of numbers, and it does. It has six sig figs, but our conversion only had three, so 7.40 moles for this one. And watch this guy. If you divide it by hydrogen, that's 1.0. That's only two sig figs. So when you divide that, that's 11. All right? Um, so watch those significant figures a little bit when you're setting these up. So again, hit the pause, get caught up. Uh, our next step, divide by the smallest, which is 7.0. And notice what we have here. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 7.40. Uh, this one's going to be 1. And this one is one and a half, okay? It's one and a half, which means that's not close enough to one, and it's not close enough to two, so it's one and a half. So what you can look at here is that's right in the middle, and that, but that 0.5, that's close to a fraction, which is one half. And if you multiply 1.5 by two, then the decimal's gone. So, but you have to do that to both of them. So that's a little trick. If you see it's close to a half, double everything, and then you'll get a nice clean ratio. And we are now ready to write the empirical formula, which of course is C2H3. Okay, now let's go back to the beginning of the problem, and I'm going to add a given. I'm going to say given the formula weight of 189.0 grams per mole, 
So you run it through a mass spec machine, boom, you know what the formula weight is. Um, and now let's predict the molecular formula. We know what the ratio is. Maybe it is C2H3. Um, but I'm thinking it's going to have to be a little higher number to reach 189. So here's what we do. Uh, you want to figure out the molecular formula? Let's walk through these steps. First of all, do the circle square for the empirical formula. And that only adds up to a wimpy little 27.0 grams per mole. That's not enough. And it's not enough by how much? You can actually just do this. Take 189 divided by 27. Remember that 189 was given to us back there. That's given in the problem, 189.0. Uh, so if you divide those out, that works out to a nice, clean, whole number. If it's not a whole no number, you, you probably did something wrong uh, on that step. Okay? Um, so then you take the C2H3, multiply a 7 through there. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 7 is 21. C14H21 is the molecular formula of that compound. Now, I have two of these for you to practice, uh, and then you just have yourself a good long weekend. Um, but uh, make sure that you can do these. Now, I'm going to give you one more little hint here. Um, when you get to this step, see how this was close to a half? Um, if it's 0.33, that's close to a third. 0.67 or 0.7 would be close to a third. All right? And then to get rid of a third, you multiply by three. Okay? Instead of multiplying everything by two, you'd multiply it by three. That's a hint uh, moving forward uh, on, your, on your problems here. But then you'll be able to uh, figure out the molecular formula when you get uh, to that point. Okay? So, um, that's the lecture. You got two practice problems, and the key is posted so that you can figure out um, uh, what we're doing. And uh, again, you get 20 points today for let me see uh, uh, you working, uh, see your screen, watching the video, and doing the worksheet. And I'll give you 20 points. And if you can't do that, then you got to send them to me the old-fashioned way. All right? So hopefully most of you can watch on your, on your Chromebooks and just... Get out there, get done with this, have yourself a great weekend. Uh, reminder, uh, the lab is due uh, on Tuesday, the hydrate lab. So if you haven't uh, finished that, you can do that this weekend too. Okay, have a great one, everyone. Take care.